everyone, I'm Megan Zimba and welcome to WDD's Hot Seat. Today we're speaking with Mark Grazier. Mark Grazier is the Worldwide Program Manager for Wireless Connectivity Solutions at Texas Instruments, where he is responsible for aligning wireless customers with Texas Instruments' third-party partners. Mark received a Bachelor of Science degree from the United States Military Academy in West Point, New York. He received his MBA from the University of Massachusetts and Lowell, Massachusetts, and he is a member of the N-Ocean, Zigbee, and IPSO alliances. Today, Mark will cover how developers are making a host of common devices in the home interoperable and smarter. And he will also provide a look at where the market is headed for Zigbee home automation and Zigbee-based lighting. So I understand that you have a presentation for us. So if you'd like, can you just briefly provide your definition for the Internet of Things and how Zigbee is, fits into it? So we've heard a lot about the Internet of Things in the past couple of years. It's actually uh, been on Wikipedia for a while, and I'm actually going to quote that as a contributed uh, source. It's basically um, uniquely identifying objects such as consumer goods, and their virtual representation in an internet structure. So in layman's terms, that really means taking a lot of devices that exist out in the world today and using their IP address to the connect them through the cloud or the internet. And the obvious advantages of doing that is that we get the benefit of linking these all together and sharing how those various features work uh, to make it more usable and more friendly and more adaptable to folks that are uh, getting very familiar with iPads and, and connected devices. What are the advantages and benefits of having a host of common devices in the home and operable with each other? Well, there's a lot of advantages, Megan. Uh, typically today when you talk about such things as security systems, home automation devices, uh, things of that nature, uh, they usually require a professional installer to come in and, and basically put them in so he's not only running power to the device, but he's also running uh, the control wire. Uh, and the control wire is typically limited to those devices that that particular company wants to sell. So what we typically see uh, coming into the Internet of Things is the capability of all these devices that have a, sh uh, a separate and unique uh, IP address that we can access them via the cloud. So what are we really talking about when we talk about the Internet of Things? We're talking about connecting everything wirelessly. And the way we do that is we have uniquely identifiable objects such as consumer goods and their virtual representation in an Internet structure. So what you see here on my presentation is what we typically see uh, emerging in the, market to, in, the, in the market today is wireless devices. And I'll start out in the, uh, the retail space here with electronic shelf tags. Uh, we're seeing more and more customer appeal for seeing real-time pricing and more importantly some real benefits on the shelf tag. And we're working with some supermarket chains that are actually driving that to the shelf edge. And besides the unique advantage of just seeing that particular device and that, that uh, product feature, uh, with more smart intelligent shopping you're actually going to receive a coupon as you walk along uh, and do the shopping in the store. So what happens is you come into the store with your with your loyalty card or whatever, you swipe it in a device and you actually walk around with that device uh, through the store. And based on you know where your experience has been in the past, as you cross the aisle, for example, for cereal or paper goods, you're actually going to receive a notification, hey Megan, uh, glad to see you stop by uh, our shelf today. Here's a 20% off coupon on uh, Frosted Flakes. So uh, what we're doing for the retail uh, experience is making it not only more user friendly, but also reducing the time it takes to shop. Uh, because some of these stores are actually incorporating uh, very smart shopping carts with a waste scale and a barcode scanner. So you can actually go through the store, pick up things, and not have to check out through the normal means just swipe by your, your loyalty card at the end through the device you're carrying and you're out and it's a much quicker and much more uh, 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 price advantage with the, with the coupons you get, that sort of thing. Uh, the other area where we're seeing a lot of uh, interest for internet and connected devices in, is in wearable devices. And these things could be such as what I'm showing here, uh, a virtual wristwatch. 
where you can take uh, so all sorts of health and fitness devices which are either available using Zigbee technology or Bluetooth low energy technology, uh, capture the data, transmit to the cloud, and when you're through with your exercise or walking or fitness program for the day, download that and look at the results and see you know, how many calories you've expended, how far you went, uh, so on and so forth. So what we're really seeing when we talk about the Internet of Things is the capability for sensors, uh, blood pressure cuffs, uh, heart rate monitors, uh, pedometers, uh, wearable devices like that, where these devices not only capture the data, but route it independently, where you can go back later on and analyze it and act upon it. And those are the features that we're typically seeing as benefits where we're using common devices in the Internet of Things. Uh, there's a fellow named Arkady Zeslavsky from the Australia Scientific Research Institute who started out tracking this stuff back in the 90s. And what he found was as more and more technology came on board where we were incorporating not only the radio for wi wi uh, the wireless device, but also the, the, the microprocessor and the flash would actually develop the protocol to reside on top of it, we were able to capture more and more data and more and more pieces. So what I'm going to spend a little bit more time on today is talking about home automation and lighting because these are the real feature sets and value for home automation and consumer devices. So the slide I'm showing you now is what we see as the connected Internet of Things going forward in the home. I mean typically in the past a lot of us uh, have purchased uh, security and alarm systems where we're relying on a smoke alarm, a carbon monoxide detector, uh, devices like that, uh, which are hardwired uh, by a, an installer. Uh, we're seeing those more and more as a value add from some of the major uh, uh, providers, both in the big box stores and the, uh, the internet stores that send content to us, either streaming video or video on demand. So what was going to happen in the future is we're going to see more and more of these companies offering consumer installed devices such as uh, security alarms. But what we're also adding is the capability to bring other sensor devices and other things into the space so that you can get maybe an alarm much quicker. So by adding Internet of Things and Zigbee technology, we're also bringing in the capability to link light systems to this. So say for example there was a small fire or some smoke in, in the home in your kitchen or whatever. Uh, not only would you get an audio alarm, but you could also connect all these lights together so that they would flash so that anybody in the room uh, or more importantly outside of that room in another area of the house that wouldn't hear the alarm initially, they would see the lights flashing and know there was a problem. Uh, for more uh, what I'd say common devices is we're incorporating this technology into door and lock controls. So this does several things. Uh, as you know, the traditional garage door opener is great for getting entry into the garage, parking your car, taking the groceries out, and whatever. But by adding this additional feature and additional common devices into the system, you not only can come into the garage, but you can also unlock the home, turn on your lights, maybe uh, bring up the shades, and adjust to what you would normally see for uh, lighting controls in your kitchen or uh, dining room area, and as you move from one area to the other, uh, that would be adaptive based on an occupancy sensor or a daylight sensor that would, that would adjust the daylight um, going further. So one of the things that we spend a lot of time on at Texas Instruments is develop a uh, this software that resides on the chip and is incorporated in such very common devices as lighting systems, uh, security and home automation devices, smart energy monitoring, smart appliances, and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. And you see them here pictured on the slide. So we're not very far away from having an internet toaster or an internet coffee maker where you can either you know, defer to turn these devices on when you actually want to use them. Uh, and more importantly, you can actually do this through the cloud. So as, as you're driving home uh, for, for evening, you can start some of these devices and actually get things prepared for you. The benefits of all this technology is that it uses low power uh, and it's low cost. So 
It doesn't require a lot of uh, additional cost to add these devices into the system, or you have the capability of plugging these into what we call a smart plug, where you actually allow the devices um, to be connected uh, through this plug-in device to a Zigbee mesh system. The other neat thing is, is that these are adaptable and scalable. So you can start off with one or two devices and add them as you want to add into the home automation system that you're building in the home. One of the other things that's uh, become very interesting is what we call Z, uh, Zigbee LightLink. So this is a protocol adapted for wireless connected lighting. We're seeing a lot of traction outside of the normal uh, home and, and consumer space in the commercial and retail space, uh, such things as um, little small uh, uh, devices in a restaurant application, for example, uh, where the restaurant uh, can adjust the lighting independently uh, during the day using a very simple direct control device such as a tip, uh, typical TV remote control. Uh, or they can use uh, the iPad here uh, to do that. So there's a lot of common apps that are developing on the uh, you know the mobile devices such as mobile phones and iPads which allow you to adjust this technology uh, on the fly. One of the things that we showed at uh, Electronica which is a major trade show in Germany back in November was our lighting wall and you see this pictured here. So what you can actually do is adjust uh, over 216 independent LED devices on that wall to create smiley faces, a company logo, a restaurant logo, or whatever. So you can advertise this. And again, this is all done wirelessly, so you don't have to change uh, a lot of uh, wired control uh, architecture behind this. This is all done uh, remotely. We've actually used one of our products called uh, a Beagle Bone, uh, which is centered here. This is a very simple uh, uh, processor, which drives uh, you know, over 100 devices. And what we're going to show you at the end of the presentation here is a video clip uh, that Megan uh, can add to the presentation, where, again, we're independently controlling all of these so that we not only create a great consumer experience, but also make it very easy uh, for people to install it. When we talk about lighting control, we're talking about, again, integrating all these various uh, end devices, like the light switch, like the LED light itself, like the daylight sensor and the occupancy sensor making it easy to install, making it scalable and low power enough so that it can, on a lot of these devices, operate on batteries as opposed to being uh, plugged into the wall. So I've spent a little bit of time uh, really talking about where the features are in this. And Megan, if you have any questions uh, or follow-on comments, I'd be happy to address them. Um, I have one question for you. What are your predictions for the Zigbee home automation and Zigbee-based lighting market, and what roles does Texas Instruments play in that, uh, in your predictions? Um, I know you, you commented on a lot of the home automation and light, lighting-based applications. Is there any other industries that you guys are focused on, like medical, for instance? Sure. That's a great question, Megan. We're absolutely focused on the medical space as well. And where we're really focusing on is what we call the outpatient or in-home in monitoring devices. And I'll use an example of uh, a person that has diabetes. Uh, typically, a, a diabetic person uh, has to monitor their water retention. So using a very simple waste scale that they could have in their home and a connection through a Zigbee uh, gateway device, such as the one I'm showing here, uh, the person could step on the scale and without them having to intervene at all, pass that data uh, through a routing device that I mentioned earlier to the nurse's uh, call station or whatever uh, with the doctor that they have. And they can look at how much the person's weighed for the day. Uh, they can also get a video uh, camera or, or snapshot of how the person looks. And if the person has some sort of uh, you know, uh, immediate increase in weight, the nurse may call and say, hey, come on in, we need to check you out. Uh, very simple things uh, for you know, outpatient care, uh, adding an accelerometer onto a very simple key fob. Uh, the nurse or doctor can track your movements, uh, particularly for elderly care, uh, through the home and make sure that you're fine for the day. So it makes it much more a pleasurable experience for our elderly care uh, takers, 
that they don't have to be home all the time monitoring their uh, their parents or grandmother. It's all done uh, transparent to the user uh, through this wireless technology. And another question, um, Mark, you said that this is something that would be like remote operated. Uh, maybe something through your mobile devices such as a tablet or iPhone. Is there a type of app that people would need to purchase? And if so, where would they purchase that app? Would it be on any app store that's available? Like Google Play, I know, is an app, st app store for um, Android devices. Is, is it something that Texas Instruments would be providing, or is that something the cellular carriers would provide? So that would be, that would be typically something that uh, companies like Google, uh, like Apple that are developing these tons of applications, you would you would go up um, and you know actually pull those down as an app, download them on your device and run with it. So back to your earlier question about you know where we see this going forward, uh, it's very clear that as more and more of these apps become available, and more and more end devices are available through the big box retailers, that more and more of these devices are going to be in the market and adopted by folks like you and I. Well, is there anything else, Mark, that you would like to add to the conversation to let our viewers know about Texas Instruments, especially with this sort of technology? Sure. So we have a ton of uh, information on our website at www.ti.com slash Zigbee. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to also add a video clip to the end of this showing you, again, how some of this lighting technology uh, is actually enabled for consumers like you and I today. Well, thank you, Mark. I, would, I appreciate the time that you've taken with us, and we look forward to all the future technologies that you guys are going to bring to the table. Um, I'd also like to thank all the viewers out there for joining us in this episode of The Hot Seat.